Hello, Michael here from Small Robot Studio with another Houdini tutorial. Today we're going to be having a look at how to model a gemstone and uh, create some procedural damage to it. And then in the next tutorial we'll be having a look at how to uh, render these, uh, create a shader for it with uh, Redshift. Um, so we're going to do this procedurally, so we'll just create some geometry to start off with. Dive in here, we'll create a box and we're basing this on a uh, certain game series. We'll see if you can figure out which one. Uh, let me know in the comments if you figure that out. Now it should be pretty easy. Okay to, okay, to start off we're going to change this to a polygon mesh and we'll add two divisions, uh, three divisions in each direction. So you get something that looks like that. I'm going to hold down, uh, uh, then we're going to select the center points, like so. If I hit W, you have to see them all. And we're going to scale those all outwards, like so. Then we're going to select all the center points on the Y direction and scale those upward, like that. Um, then we'll drop in a transform and we'll just scale this inward and I'm just going to look at it from the front perspective just to get my silhouette a little bit closer to being what I want it to look like. So I'm just going to select those outside points and I think I will bring them a bit closer. All right, and we'll add some normals to that so it looks a little bit better in the viewport. And flat and wireframe shader and okay, so we have our gemstone. Now, uh, we actually don't need the center uh, poly loop. So we'll just select that, hold down A and middle mouse click it and we'll delete it. And now that I look at this, I actually want to transform it a little bit in the Y. So it's a bit longer. All right, we're going to add a little bit of bevel to this. And by a little bit, I mean a very little bit, 0 0.001. And this part is important for later on, but make sure you've set it to crease um, and the divisions to two. This is just going to help us um, when we're in the shading portion of this tutorial. Okay, so um, you could actually use this for the shading portion if you like it to look pretty simple. Uh, I'm going to add some damage to it though. To create the noise and damage across the surface of our polygon, we're going to convert this to a VDB and then use an add vection um, to do so. So we will convert, so we'll go VDB from polygons and we'll keep the voxel size large for the moment while we're working on it and we'll need a VDB advect and that's going to go into the left input there at the moment it won't do anything we have to give it some things to advect uh, I'm not going to go too far into how this is really working. Uh, Intagma has a good tutorial on advection and I'm kind of using a similar process. Um, so we're going to use two VDB um, analyze nodes. So I'm just going to alt click and drag that for a second one. The left one is going to be a gradient and we're going to give it a custom name, call it gradient. And the right one can be a couple of different things. Uh, we're going to use curvature though. And we'll call it curvature. We'll run both of those into a volume VOP. And this is where we're going to create our surface noise using a noise generator. We're not, out, not outputting volume, so we'll get rid of that. All right, so what we need to do is grab our file, uh, our, um, this input, which is going into the second input there. And we're going to apply noise to this by using a unified noise. 
and running the position into the position and then the noise into the sample position. Then we can control the profile of that noise of the ramp parameter into the input. Change that to a spline ramp. And then we're going to uh, grab our gradient parameter with a um, bind. We'll just change that to gradient and it's type to vector. And then we're going to multiply those two by each other. Gradient into there, ramp into there. And then we need a bind export and the product will go into there and then we'll just write this to the gradient parameter again and change that again to a vector. So now when we go up a level, we can plug that volume into our VDB advect and have a look. Oh, and our ramp, um, we'll just push the first input up. So you can see that it's starting to do something now. Uh, we're gonna need a little bit more topology there. So we'll just change that to uh, 0.05 for the moment so we can get an idea of what's going on. Now we want that to be going inward. Um, so we're going to change some of these settings. Okay, so you can see here that I've used the Perlin noise with frequency of 1, 1, negative 10 and 1. And then just um, these settings here. You can use whatever you want, obviously. Um, what you'll notice though is this tends to, on this mesh, swirl around the outside there. Um, and on the back, it might be a little bit too curly for my liking. Um, and also worth bearing in mind is that this is translucent. So um, what you see on the back, you're obviously going to be able to see from the front. So you may need to adjust your noise accordingly. Um, I'll make a decision on that once I'm into the shading stage though, as it'll give me a better idea of um, what it's going to look like. I tend to go as far as possible with these sorts of things um, and then rein it back. Um, just so you're not trying to creep up to the top of the mountain, you're getting all the way to the top and maybe backing off a little bit. So now we'll convert this to a um, polygon. So we're just going to be VDB um, convert and run that into input one. And then we'll just put wireframe on and change that to polygons and it doesn't look too bad but you'll see along here that's not great um, yeah even with your normals fixed it's it's going to have a lot of banding when we render it across there as well so we want to change the adaptivity of that say 0.1 Oh yeah, that's not too bad. So now we just need to possibly increase our, or decrease the voxel size, and increase our resolution. It's possibly going to get rid of a bit too much of the damage, so I'll just increase that size slightly. That's better. I like that bit there and that bit there, so I'll make sure we keep those. The backside probably needs work, but worry about it a little bit later and now we'll just go back and look at our wireframe that looks good nice and flat on the sides and nice and noisy where there's noise all right so make sure you're here uh, subscribed for the next tutorial so you can check out how we are going to render this that's it for this tutorial. If you found it useful, make sure you leave a like so other people can find it. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe as we're bringing out CG and illustration tutorials every week, just like this one. Become a patron and access tutorial assets, bonus content, a private discord, and more by clicking the link below.